Bishes. I just got back from a trip to Joshua Tree. So I figured today I would do a video about me just drawing some of my memories from my trip. So it's kind of gonna be like a draw with me slash vlog hybrid, I guess. And I wanted to talk about one of my favorite art rules that I break all the time because so many people always ask me, how do I draw like my life drawings, my gestures in my sketchbook? And I would say yes, when I was kind of an aspiring art student, I did spend a lot of my time just sitting in cafes, trying to observe people from life. But I would say that once you kind of get the hang of things after a while and you understand how to capture life through what you see, I think you can break the rule from time to time, you know? So I have to confess that one of my favorite art rules to break is pretty much just drawing from photographs. And a lot of art teachers don't really like to hear that because I think that when you're a young student learning to draw, like they don't want you to try to imitate the photograph to the T. It's more of like, they wanna see you get the essence of the photograph and apply it to your drawings. And I feel like as long as you keep that type of awareness in your artwork, you know, I think it's okay to copy from photographs and that's pretty much what I've been doing as of lately. So one of the things that I personally like to do is to just capture videos and pausing at frames of videos because in a way you still have the movement at least of what is happening and I feel like because the image is slightly blurry and not perfect, it kind of leaves room for you to apply your own imagination. Let's dive in today's video and I can talk more about what I'm talking about. So first of all, yes, just to confirm, I do have my phone right in front of me here where I will be pulling up some images and videos to be using as a reference. And the first star of the show is our Airbnb, which we stayed at the majority of the time because we went to Joshua Tree in the summer. And for those of you who have been there, you know that it gets super hot in the summer. So we really reserved our nature outdoorsy time for either the sunrise or sunset hours where the sun was not as strong. So it was kind of important for our Airbnb to be like a haven for us. But yeah, I really miss it. That's where we had a lot of our bonding, friendship, family moments, and I can't wait to go back. So when I was a little kid, I was pretty much drawing everywhere I went. If I went to a restaurant with my parents, yes, I would be that kid at the table who's just drawing and not socializing. And even if we did go on vacations, I would always try to reserve days of the vacation to just spend time drawing in it. Like if we went to the beach, I would just draw in my sketchbook on the beach or something like that. And even though that was my way of having fun and just escaping from the world of school back then, I felt like at the same time I wasn't really present, especially with spending time with my family or just hanging out with my sister. I was just kind of always in my own little world. And there's no shame to people who do draw at the places that they travel to though. Like for some people, this is actually their hobby or for some people, this is their way of escaping their life. This is their vacation. This is their way of being present. And I feel like being present is kind of different for everyone. And for me back then drawing, yeah, I was like kind of present because I was present with drawing, but I wasn't really present with like my loved ones or the experiences that I could be having. So I always found myself drawing to escape to a world that I wanted to be a part of. But little did I know that the world that I wanted to be a part of was already out there. And it was just about me stepping out of my comfort zone to go out and get it. And if you're wondering what is this world that I'm referring to, it's kind of like the fictional worlds where friends go out on adventures and fight crime and like save the world. Those were the types of comics and drawings I was always making. I loved making comics about just a group of friends going out into the world and using their powers to like save it or something like that. And I guess the equivalent of that to reality for me was being able to have people that I could call my friends and have a little community that I can go out into the world and experience life with and explore things with and go through the highs and lows with. And in terms of that, I didn't mean like daily life. I kind of meant more like out into the wild, out into some place that we've never been to before and just experiencing that together. 
So while we were at Joshua Tree, we did some hikes that had a good number of challenges, whether if it was waking at an ungodly hour and just hiking up thousands of feet just to see the sunrise, or climbing through boulders and getting a scrape here and there, but ultimately being able to see this large valley of just rock formations and a vast valley. It's just stuff like that that made it so wondrous because you go through so many physical highs and lows together, but at the end and you all witness this beautiful thing together. And that is just one of my favorite things about going out into nature with other people other than yourself is you get to see things through the eyes of so many other people. And I feel like as an artist, that is like one of my favorite things to do is to just like be like, what would this be like through this person's perspective? I wanna know what this person would think of this. So that was really nice for us. And we were able to see so many different types of vegetation, animals or just things that you don't see like regularly where you are sure i live in california where it's still a desert but there's still some things about just the pure wilderness that you just don't see at home and a lot of us too are also just from new york or the east coast where it's mainly cities so so having this as a break from just work and the typical hustle and grinds of life was just really nice there was also a time period in life, especially during the summer and winter breaks of college, where I literally was just hanging out with friends 24 seven, and I just pretty much never drew. Like I was only hanging out with friends and I would never touch a pen or a pencil the whole time. And the only times I would touch it was when I went back to school. So even though those were the times in life, I was the least productive societal standard wise, it was still the time period in life I felt the most happy and just full emotionally. And I did feel guilty during those times because I felt like, oh my God, I haven't been drawing. Like, holy shit, what if I forget to draw? Like, what did I work for all this time in my life just to hang out with people and just suddenly lose my skill? Like those thoughts definitely crossed my mind. And it took me a while to really learn to be okay with just not drawing because I was someone who literally drew like she breathed. So it was very weird for me to not really be drawing and I did feel a lot of guilt, but I eventually realized that in life, you're not always going to be the same level of productive at all the different phases, like different phases of your life are going to demand a different type of you. And in terms of productivity, that is different for everyone. Like that doesn't mean that you're unproductive just because you're not drawing or doing the thing that is related to your career. You could be productive relationship wise, you could be productive emotional wise, or you could be productive self wise and just be learning a lot about yourself. And for me, little me was drawing the life that she wanted to have back then as a kid, making these fictional stories. And she couldn't afford to have that life yet because she was a kid. She can't afford vacations. She can't, she doesn't know how to be responsible yet. But now older me now actually has the tools to make little me's dreams a reality. So I like to think of my younger self as the little girl who was planning for the life that I wanted to live. I was drawing stories of the types of experiences I wanted to have in the future and now that I am older and I have a fucking job and I finished school I actually can now go do those things and travel and explore and just do the things that my younger self wanted to do and that is not to say that you need to have a job or go to school and finish it just to go out and have these experiences but for me this was just the sequence of events that happened to allow me to have these experiences. But yeah, other than the hikes that we had, we also had very chill nights too, where we had a bonfire in the backyard and we would just sit around the campfire and sing our campfire songs, which basically were just of us talking about our life stories and stuff. It was just nice because on this trip, there were parties of people who have never met each other before. And there were friends that were on this trip that have been friends for years. But of course, everybody at some point reaches some sort of plateau in their relationship. And they're just like, all right, it's time to introduce some new friends into the group and see what happens. So it was really nice to have some friends just meet other friends of others and just see a relationship between them also build. I feel like that's just another element of life that makes you feel like you're watching a movie or making you feel like your life is a movie. So yeah, I lived vicariously through seeing other relationships develop on this trip. 
So for this sketchbook, I just pretty much keep a theme for whatever spread that I'm doing. This one is clearly on my trip and based on memories, and I don't put any pressure into what sequential order I'm going to be doing them in. I'm not going to force myself to like draw every single thing that I wrote down on my list of things that I wanted to draw from the trip. So yeah, I pretty much just wrote a list of just various things that happened on the trip, whether it was a highlighted event or a highlighted object or a highlighted thing that just was a part of the trip, I wrote it down, but I'm not going to pressure myself to draw everything from the list. It's kind of more like, here's the list, pull what you need from it. If you don't want to draw any more of it, fine, cool, whatever. It's kind of just like using a photograph as a reference. You don't need to copy the photograph to a T to create art. You're just using it as a reference to just use it as a basic guide, but you're not really using it to copy every single detail when you're drawing something like this that is kind of more for emotional purposes, I guess. So yeah. When you're drawing from photos, again, the goal is to not completely copy the photo. It's to capture the essence and the feeling of it. And I feel like that just feels too overly profound for me to say, but that's just honestly what it is. I wouldn't think too deeply about the rule that people like your art teachers might say and be like, don't copy from photos because it's going to stiffen up your drawing. Yeah, it might stiffen up your drawing if you end up thinking too much about how your drawing does not look exactly like the photograph and you try to copy every single detail. But instead of trying to copy the detail, I would like to think about, oh, how did this photo make you feel? How did it make you perceive whatever is going on in it? And then kind of just draw based off of that. Yes, you're still using the photo as a reference for where things might be placed or if you want to actually get a portion of the drawing more accurate. Yeah, photos are super helpful, but don't feel like they are your template for your final art. Otherwise, the photo already exists. Why create a new piece of artwork if there's already a photo of it? Unless if your goal is to actually strengthen your photocopying skills, then sure, go ahead. So yeah, that's just what I think is that young art students might focus too much on trying to copy an image directly, which is why some art teachers might, you know, tell you not to do that. But I think that if you have the mindfulness and attention to know that you're not being a copy machine and you're just using the image as a reference and inspiration, I think it's totally okay to use a photo. And also if you have videos, again, I highly recommend those as well, because if you're wanting to draw someone run, why not just record a video of them and pause at the frame to draw them run? Because let's be real, in real life, if someone was running, you're not going to be able to capture that bitch within the amount of time that they're running. You will miss them. And it's kind of silly to kind of force yourself to put yourself through that situation where you ask the person, hey, can you run five more times and I'll draw you like in five more attempts or something like that. Other fun things that I like to do are just label locations that I went to or draw the people who were involved or draw some of the things I saw or random miscellaneous items who seem to be actually relevant and memorable from the trip. So yeah, in a way, drawing has pretty much been a form of journaling for me for the times that I don't feel like writing, but I still want to document something that I experienced. So I highly recommend for you to, you know, sketch out your memories if you ever want to or feel like it. Um, again, at the end of the day, this is your life that you're living and this is your art that you're creating. And yeah, people are going to put out rules out there to help you develop your skills further. But sometimes you draw not because you just want to keep developing your skills. Sometimes you want to draw to actually experience something something positive or you just want to draw to remember things from your life. Sometimes the goal of drawing is to not always be technically correct. So that is why I think it's okay to break these rules sometimes. Anyway, I hope you all have fun doing something today and maybe capture it in your sketchbook. And if you do, tag me on Instagram. I love seeing sketchbook spreads of what people do in their day to day. So yeah. Thank you for watching this video and thanks for watching some snippets of my trip and I will see you all in the next one. So peace out and stay wholesome, bitches.